Hello, Bernard. Hi, Carsten. So in this one, what, uh, what are we doing now? Yeah, uh, we are having a short admin view on FS logics, right? Maybe let's see how short, short it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's see how that works. So you're looking at my desktop, um, and maybe you know that's how it would look like from a user perspective, right? So you see here, as I mean, we've done that before, right? You see that connection. Um, if I would do a uh, command line, uh, who am I? You could see that I'm, you know, logged in as bfrank. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, that's user. just, yeah, the normal user. So if I open up File Explorer, right, I could look at this PC. I see my, you know, uh, the one remote, my remote drive, which was uh, sort of redirected through. But, you know, you see the C drive off the box. I don't see any map drives you know, or other profile share, right? But I could tell that I am using a profile share by writing data to my documents folder, for example, and watch the network, right? Um, and that might be a useful thing to do. And I prepared some PowerShell script one more time again. So let's have a look in there because what the, this PowerShell script does it's just writing some random data to the documents folder, right? Um, so I'll open it up in File Explorer, go to my network, go to my documents folder, and hit the start button on this partial script, right? So you, we should see that random data is flowing to my documents folder, right? And if I go to the networks view, I see that I'm using currently roughly about 400, 500 megabit, right? And I'm writing like this to it. So that would give me an indication on how fast the network is, how fast it goes, right? If, because you need to calculate up for a lot of users, right? Um, so in order, what I'm trying to say here is you would not place your storage or your profile on a storage that is slow for a thousand users, right? Um, so, you know, be sure that you do some testing because some of the users might write data and uh, you don't want them to complain uh, yeah. over bad performance. I think in our scenario, it's not the performance of the storage, it's uh, the one gigabit network that's maybe involved here. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, you you have yeah. to plan for that too, right? Yeah, so the uh, it, it comes together, right? So the storage underneath um, needs to be attached to a, a, a high speed network, right? Especially if you write more data or if more data is to be expected. If you have more okay, users. right. So the user, you know, doesn't see anything too much except maybe the network performance, right? Um, but from an administrator perspective, it looks a little bit different, right? So um, and I'm logging on to the same system as admin now, and you could tell, you know, by the bluish um, terminal server or the, um, remote desktop um, bar at the top. And the next thing that I'll do, I'll open up Disk Manager for this, right? And it's the same host that my other users connected to. So um, what you could see here is that B Frank, which is currently on, right? Um, and I could tell by using task manager and going under the user section. So I could see here B Frank is on, but now I'm admin BF. And I um, could tell, you know, that this profile share is being mapped to the user, right? Because you see a virtual hard disk attached uh, to the operating system, right? So that's one indication that profile attachment has worked, right? The other thing is, uh, which I think is more interesting when it comes to problems. Uh, and usually maybe in the beginning, you don't get the permissions right or something else is not working correctly, right? Especially if you're using, for example, multiple multiple um, profile shares, then FSLogix is writing a profile um, and you navigate to it. Uh, I think the best way is going to see program files. There's a folder called FSLogix and under apps, there is a tool called FX, FRX tray. You double click on it and it will, you know, sort of come to life uh, under the 
under the start menu or not start menu, but you know the um, the background running uh, programs. And if you go in there and click on open, you have something that is called the advanced view and I'll open it up. And there on the profile, you could see the log files for just the profile folder, right? In case any issues are, this is the go-to uh, the go-to way, right? So if you have any issues, um, go there, uh, figure out the issue that you have, and try to fix the problem. Okay. Um, yes, that we use that tool in our scenario because we mm -hmm. have multiple shares. Right. for our users and we mm -hmm. we used the the, the wrong uh, separator we used a comma instead yeah. of a semicolon yeah. and it didn't work so we find out over this tool right right and you would also see you know if you don't if you mix up the permission settings for example right mm -hmm. uh you would also be able to troubleshoot those using that log file so um yes and i think that's sort of also interesting so we separated or we are using two profile shares um and fs logics is capable of you know sort of uh, um is using two profile shares the first one will be used um prior the other one so it gets a higher priority if you want to um but the first one is sort of figured out but the by the registry setting right so you would be able to, if you go to reg edit, um, there is an FS logics or software. You should see FS logics, um, and there is profiles, and you see a VHD locations path here. And the first one is, you know, the um, the most important one. If you have a profile there, um, it will be loaded right away, right? If it doesn't find it, it will iterate through to the other ones, um, seeing if the profile is there, right? Um, and in case no profile is found in any location, it will create a new profile just for you in the first profile container it finds, right? So in order to prove that, uh, we created a second profile. You were um, able or we moved the profile with the correct permissions to the second profile share mm -hmm. um, and now you're trying to log on as this user right uh, and see if you i can could... i can do that uh, okay background so, mm -hmm. so it will take a while because my my rdp client is not so fast than yours mm -hmm. so... and we'll so uh, while i'm doing that um, mm -hmm. it's important that new profiles are always created in the first pass you said that and mm -hmm. then if you want to have load balancing or mm -hmm. load the share over different shares mm -hmm. uh, you have to move them manually mm -hmm. you have some process for that and they don't have to be on the same server you could could also have multiple file servers we have a high available file server mm -hmm. but you could also use vessel locking uh, multiple file servers and uh, put them there right mm -hmm. so get another yeah. um, get yep. some redundancy for your profile so now i have to log in so mm -hmm. my complex password i have to shut up otherwise so now the profile is red mm -hmm. and you see the metadata right right and look at the timestamp and it's also you know mounting the the profile so the timestamps changed um to be you know if you look at the right bottom um you would see that it's uh 7 7 a.m redmond time right and um if karsten is doing something he you know he would be able to write to that folder if he's logging off right the full the metadata will be merged into the um uh, or sort of you know go away so and, i um, modified the file problem. in the desktop and i copied the file to, uh, to mm -hmm. the desktop and now i'm right it's a small one so mm -hmm. i sign out now and we mm -hmm. should see the update of yep the there it is Okay, good. So that's one thing. Uh, um, so it worked, the process worked. 
um, another thing, uh, and you might remember I was using or I was copying some data to my, uh, to my profile share that these mm -hmm. profiles can grow over the time, right? Um, and in order to clean up or, you know, in, in Azure storage is expensive because you pay for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, for the size on disk, right? Um, and even if you want to have a performant uh, storage, this can be a cost costly thing. On premise, it might not be so drastic, right? But uh, there are tools that optimize that VHDX file, that shrink it down um, in terms of for saving performance, right? I mean, you could limit the profile share to a maximum a user could use, but you could also run a PowerShell script in order to grab that VHDX, optimize it, and then you know shrink it down, and then detaching it, and um, and saving saving disk space as well. So um, look for the tools FS Shrink uh, down there, and I'll put the the link in the video as well. Okay. Okay, but I think for an overview, we are good. Huh? We're doing very good, I would say, right? Okay, see you okay. on the next one.